Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Gato. My name is Hans. I'm Edward. And thank you so much for joining us for the ninth episode. <laughs> Jeez, it's getting up there. A boy's getting old. Slowly, slowly but surely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm assuming we'll be at episode 10. I don't know if we'll do anything special for it because for those who might not know, South Africa is in a lockdown and that lockdown has now been extended by another 14 days. Yeah, that means we now have three weeks to go as opposed to one. <laughs> yes, so we initially started off with three weeks to go. So now we've got another three weeks to go. So it's kind of like Groundhog Day. <laughs> yeah, like Groundhog Day. I'm going to learn how to, to play the piano and sculpt ah, an yes. ice sculpture or something. <laughs> <laughs> one of the many skills you'll be able to pick up in the new 21 days we have Yeah. <laughs> Of Gosh. course, um, there are people who are not abiding to the rules and regulations, right? Ugh. <laughs> like, <laughs> how how thick could you get? Honestly, like, this is all to, to f well, quote-unquote, float in the curve. It's to Correct. make this thing go away. And it's just not. Realistically, it won't go away until we get a vaccine, okay? But, but, staying at home is a very good means of lessening the spread. And if we can lessen the spread, we drop the curve. If we can drop the curve, it means that our medical resources won't be overutilized and therefore less deaths will occur. But of course, you know, there are a whole lot of Neanderthals out there, just like some of the people in my complex who just this morning <laughs> we caught <laughs> sneaking in some contraband in the form of alcohol. <laughs> Gosh. And speaking of Neanderthals. <laughs> <laughs> so that sounds so, so insulting, but I totally agree with you. Um, speaking of Neanderthals, I just wanted to, to mention something we came across this week. Um, yes. regarding It's actually incredibly interesting. Yeah. Um, so basically... Did you Actually, know hold on, hold on. Be be before, before you continue, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I know we just used Neanderthals as a derogatory term, but what we're yeah. about to talk about means that actually we're now, we're now mocking the Neanderthals when they shouldn't be mocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like we shouldn't even use that as a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> as okay. okay. Let's term. actually, let's get to why, and you'll understand in a moment. So, so this week, we found out that Neanderthals understood math and had a basic understanding of materialism. That's right. It was basic math and basic materials. Okay, so, so scientists discovered a six millimeter long cord fragment made from bundles of fiber twisted together. Now, obviously, that doesn't sound like much, right? But I'm assuming it's a, like an incredibly revolutionary discovery because we've always assumed that these, well, not really creatures, but I guess um, pre-human humanoids, right? Yeah. didn't have these capabilities. And now we're seeing that they are able to make rope, right? That's yeah, technically like, like, what it is. <laughs> basically, no rope and, and any fiber-related thing. Because up until now, we thought them to only use rocks and mud and very, uh, I dare say, primitive construction. Yes, naturally. Um, yes. But now we know that they were able to uh, co to build complex things like bags and nets to fish with, and maybe even proper fishing um, fishing. That's equipment. actually in incredible. So, so technically, what this is what like a forty one fifty two thousand year old discovery, right? Yeah. And the the understanding by the scientists in who discovered it in the southeast of France is that um, these early fibers they're assuming they were actually able to yarn them together, right? Yeah. And that's what you're yeah. saying? To make like traps and bags and stuff? Exactly. I mean, you know, that's incredible. If you think about it like that, that means that they were far more advanced than anyone gives them credit for. Which, to me at least, puts an entirely new spin on the hum humanity should see technology. Like, we didn't know about using fibers and... We thought it only went back like a few hundred years, not thousands and thousands of years. I think it's absolutely fascinating because it really does give us a whole new light 
on the human race, I presume, right? Especially if you believe in evolution. And it's fascinating to see where we could have possibly come from and to know how these humanoid creatures were actually far more advanced in terms of productivity and creating tools than we've given them thought. And if you take that into consideration, then you also have to give credence to the fact that it's possible that they actually lived complex lives. You know, maybe with cultures that we just aren't aware of because they were destroyed and, you know, they didn't have methods of putting these down to stand the test of time. You know, much like how the Egyptians in in the hieroglyphics, you know. Exactly. So it's it's really fascinating. And I also understand from the article that the fibers were derived from bark, which is very interesting to me, you know, versus how we get fibers today. And that therefore, again, leads to the sense of the fact that Neanderthals possibly understood growth and the seasonality of conifer trees yeah uh, which means they understood math it's, that's it, incredible <laughs> they could figure out when to use which bark and how to weave it in such a way to make it useful it's really incredible now something that intrigues me about this whole thing is we're only discovering this now right and mm-hmm. if you believe in the theory of evolution you have to believe in coincidence right yeah. you, know, you have to believe that these things just randomly were able to come together versus somebody who believes in divine intervention like myself all right mm-hmm. now in terms of coincidence i don't know how much you really think about serendipitous events um, i do not <laughs> well <laughs> I, I like to like look at things within life and see how things sort of like come together and how they relate in that. And with that in mind, I actually came across something called the Laura Buxton coincidence. Okay. And it's the most fascinating story of pure coincidence. And essentially, it's about this lady, Laura Buxton, right, um, who Mm -hmm. in 2001 released a balloon with a note and it contained her name, her address and a message, uh, basically for whomever finds it. And what is most what is so interesting about this is that 10 days later, somebody did find it. All right. It was actually a neighbor of another lady called Laura. So the neighbor then gives this package from the sky to this other lady called Laura. And now this is where things start really getting very strange. Okay. So not only do the Lauras share the same name, right? But Laura A, who sent the balloon, and Laura B, who picked it up, eventually got in touch with each other. And then they decided to meet. And now okay. this is where the coincidences just started spiraling out of control. And honestly, you've got to believe that we either live in the Matrix or there's some sort of divine intervention happening because this level of coincidence is honestly going to blow your mind. So what ends up happening is Laura A and Laura B decide they're going to meet each other. And when they do, they're wearing identical outfits, including the same pink sweater. All right. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if it wasn't weird enough that they had the same name, they actually ended up wearing the same outfits without, without realizing it. Now, bear in mind, these are total strangers. They don't know each other. One sent a balloon and the other one somehow managed to get it. And this is what's happening. (laughs) Okay, cool. So, so before you continue, um, you say they met up. How far did this balloon go and how far did they have to travel? It traveled 140 miles. What? Which is super far. I mean, that's what, like 250 kilometers, almost 300 kilometers. A- about. It's basically like us in Joburg throwing up a balloon and it somehow gets to almost Durban. Yeah. And then it just so Durban. happens that this person has the same name as you and then you decide to meet up and you're wearing the same outfit. But hold on, let me, let me continue because it gets a little bit weirder than that. <laughs> okay. So not only are they wearing the same clothing, but they also have the same color hair and it's also cut to the same length. Okay. Now, obviously, this doesn't seem all too, you know, unrealistic that people would have same similar color hair and, you know, what it is brown and maybe a similar color length. But it gets weirder still. Okay. (laughs) So, in addition to that, they were the same height and they were both taller than kids during school, other children. And so they had that as as a commonality. They also each had a three-year-old Labrador retriever, a pet rabbit, a tan guinea pig with matching orange markings, all right, that each girl... (laughs) This sounds fake. ...brought with them. Hold on. That each girl brought with them to the meeting where they met each other, okay? Wait, wait. (laughs) 
they brought the animals with them? Well, not all of the animals, but the guinea pigs. Oh, that's so weird. Right? But, I mean, there's just so much coincidence here. I mean, how how is it that you can meet a total stranger over 300 kilometers away with the same name as you, the same hairstyle, the same height, okay, the same three pet animals being a rabbit, a guinea pig, and, and a three-year-old Labrador? I mean, I'm getting... My nipples are hard just thinking about this right now. <laughs> Im- <laughs> like for the greasies that I'm getting right now. <laughs> Im- imagine having an ex called Laura dumping her <laughs> and then moving out of town 140 miles away, meeting another girl named Laura and she's the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, now wouldn't that be serendipitous? <laughs> that hey, would be... You- <laughs> I-, I would go crazy. Gosh. <laughs> well, it's just, it's it's incredible. And like, you know, the more you think about it, the more you, I believe that there's things we still don't understand in the universe. You know, like yeah. why people have been buying out toilet paper, okay? And how that is now the currency of the future. You're like, you're like I thought it would be bottle caps, but okay. Uh, this is going to sound way out of left field, but I bet you could tell them apart by, by their anal prints. <laughs> I know we were and, just talking about toilet paper, but how are you getting to anal prints? I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Well, twins, toilet paper, anal. Anyway. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you telling yeah. me that our butts are unique? Yes, apparently they what? are. What? Yeah. So... <laughs> So get this. Um, what? <laughs> so I came across a little little tidbit on the internet. Oh, I love the internet. Um, of oh a modular a modular <laughs> attachment for your toilet. Okay, that can read your anal print <laughs> and detect possible health issues. And who you are <laughs> if you attach it to your toilet. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just wondering, like, who funds this research? <laughs> like, like, hi, university board. I want to create a probe that can look at anuses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Look, so, at least the aliens would be proud, right? <laughs> yeah, they Paul would be so proud. So, this uh. thing, it was created by researchers at Stanford University. I, I can just imagine how that board meeting went. Um, and it's equipped with cameras and sensors that collect information. That On one, I'm they sorry, look at your anus. Is... <laughs> Two, they, they collect information on your bodily waste... And then they use the different st- stuff they collect to tell who you are, what, how old you are, and to, to basically... <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing so much about this. I'm actually crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, hold on. So, just wait, wait. I okay. actually see here on the notes <laughs> that this... Anal print technology was inspired by Salvador Dali. What? Yeah. Okay, so so Salvador Dali discovered that the anus has, and I quote, 35, uh, 35 or seven, uh, 37 creases, which are as unique as fingerprints. Oh, I just need to know how he knew this. I, I do not know. And I do not know who asked. But... Well, Salvador Dali, apparently. <laughs> well, hello, my dear. Just bend down okay, I'm for sorry, a second. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm under control now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's super intriguing. Um, so, hold on. Tell me a little bit more about it. So, I understand that it's still in the, what, prototype stage, right? It's not officially real where you can go and buy an anal probe device to no 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 it's <laughs> it's it's still very much in in development um basically so the the researcher who made this is named sean park i believe okay and he wrote in a blog post that this is not the only thing it can do that the point of 
all of this is to figure out if you have health issues. And okay. because of the type of technology that it is, you can use, use it to basically put it on your toilet. If it's a smart toilet, you can... You know those toilets that you had in Japan? Uh, you oh, know those... don't even get me started on those. Now, now, look, I know I've been laughing uncontrollably for a while now, but I honestly yeah. love Japanese toilets. The way they clean your tush, you your tush will never feel the same way again. And so... You know, I guess if I think about that, I guess I wouldn't mind if I was sitting down anyway to mm. release some excrement if the toilet decided to analyze my butt and tell me <laughs> if I was <laughs> okay or not. Yeah. So basically, it, the technology allows for, for those kinds of toilets to to talk with this thing, uh, with, with this Raspberry Pi machine, um, to make sure that all of your settings, like the the temperature of your the water that touches your tush, the basically the way the the I don't know the spray comes up and and cleans up your your butt, um, <laughs> and the anal creases that you have, right? Because yeah, those and are all unique, of your, every single one of your thirty seven <laughs> anal creases, um, it, it's it allows for that kind of smart. Toiletry oh, you know what? Actually, I can see a real-world application for this. Mm. So imagine now you get up in the morning, and you know most people have a bowel movement in the morning. Yeah. And you decide you go you go into the bathroom, and because you now have a smart home and a smart toilet, you sit down. It knows you by your anal print, and boom, the speakers in the bathroom will set your music to your liking exactly. and the water temperature to what you like. Oh, fascinating! Now, of course, I'll be honest and say that. Maybe it would have been better if you could just use facial recognition. But hey, let's not... Well, uh... <laughs> well to be fair, um, the smart toilet also includes a fingerprint scanner, just in case it gets you wrong. That seems a bit redundant. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of all of these other, like, really puerile examples of, like, for example, let's say you're, you need to get an anal scan to go with your passport. So that if you get pulled over in Welcome border to control, the they can know who you are. <laughs> the future is now, baby. Look oh, well, okay. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to go down that path, but that's just how I'm thinking about it. Look, speaking of the future, mm. something happened this week, which was pretty awesome. And it was the reveal of Sony's new DualSense controller. Finally. Finally, something, something from the Sony camp, right? Because we yeah. all know that uh, Microsoft with the Series X have been quite forthcoming, which mm -hmm. has been really great. But Sony's been very mum on pricing, what it looks like, um, and only recently revealed some of the specs. Mm. So, DualSense, it's an unusual name because it moves on from DualShock, which they've been using for a very, very long time. Yeah. And the design language is really unique this time around. So, I personally like the look of it. I think it looks great. Sure, there are a lot of memes out there right now. Um, and I do think that the coloring, because they've gone for like a black and white motif, yeah. is going to be a problem. Um, mm. Anybody who's had a white console controller knows just how dirty they do get. Um, it's actually quite gross. So I don't know if this is maybe going to be the default controller or if they just showed this color combination as a means of being like, well, look, this is what we can do going forward. So I personally think it's going to be the default for the PlayStation 5, just like how we got the Xbox One S, which was default white. Um, now, naturally, there are a million special editions, limited editions of the Xbox, and I bet that it's going to be the same for the PlayStation 5. Look, so... something I will admit is I personally like the design. I know you're not a fan of it. No. Um, you think it's a little bit too, what, like they try too hard to be futuristic. Yeah. Um. I really like it. I like the fact that it's a little bit bigger as well, it seems. So possibly more in line with an Xbox controller, which I have always found to be way more comfortable than Sony's previous DualShocks. With that in mind, something I do like about what they've shown us so far is that it will lead to a very interesting PlayStation 5 reveal. I mean, I'll be honest, I will be happy to have a white PS5 console. You know, for mm. from a console to be white, it's great. Controller, not so much, but a console, yes. And yeah. now that I've seen the wonderfully smooth lines, you know, and the concave shapes, I'm quite excited to see what they're going to do. Well, we've only seen this so far, but this made me think that we might actually be getting that 
ugly V shape that's been oh, making no. the rounds. Look, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, um, we will post a link to images of it in the description of the podcast, so you can actually check it out. If that is the case, I'm going to be disappointed. I think yeah. that is really ugly, in my personal opinion. Mm. Like, maybe if they rounded it out a bit, it would look better? Maybe. Okay, look, we're focusing too much on design. Let's actually speak about <laughs> what <laughs> makes the, the dual sense the dual sense. Okay, yes. Uh, so, according to Sony, it has a built-in rechargeable battery, which... I still don't get why Xbox is always lambasted about this. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, sure, I will always buy a play and charge kit for my Xbox, um, you know, to put a battery in so that it's rechargeable. And I've never felt that that was an issue. I just felt that it just gave me the option. I could either use a rechargeable battery or I could use whatever batteries I have lying around. Yeah. Um, and yet a lot of people seem to say that they prefer the DualShock having a built-in battery. Now, the thing is, Lithium-ion batteries don't last forever. They do degrade, mm. which means that you'd have to replace your controller every, what, three years, right? Two to depending, three years, yeah. Depending on how often you're playing, right? Now, I know yeah. I say that despite the fact that the Xbox Elite wireless controller has a built-in battery, which I absolutely adore, right? I just don't think it's a big deal. I don't know why people keep going on about it. Whether it's yeah, an internal it's... battery or rechargeable is really irrelevant at the end of the day. Having said that, the new DualSense does have what Sony are calling haptic feedback triggers okay now i heard this and i thought to myself well isn't that what is already available in microsoft's xbox one controller you oh. know a lot of people have forgotten that if you go back to like 2013 there were a lot of articles about exactly this feature where the xbox controllers have these dual rumble technologies built in so that for example if you're playing forza where you could tell the difference between driving on tar or driving on gravel mm. So with that in mind, I figured, well, this is, can't be that revolutionary, okay? Well, thanks to the people over at Digital Foundry, they've actually elaborated a little bit more on this. And it turns out that the Xbox controllers have dual motors for vibration, whereas the DualSense actually has a coil system. So technically, the coil would allow the DualSense to have a greater level of, I guess, immersion which is what they're going for so okay. essentially you could you can feel more nuance with it so it's not that it's that much better than what xbox already has it's just it's more nuanced as far as i understand mm. of course having said this if i look at the number of games on xbox which actually make use of those dual rumbles it's less than the number of fingers i have in one hand it's basically just racing games pretty much so i'm not anticipating any other developer other than first party developers to actually support this feature. So cool, it's great that it's there, awesome that they're revolutionizing, but it's a little bit gimmicky. It's very much like the Nintendo Switch. It also has a very similar like haptic feedback, but only Nintendo games actually take advantage of it. So, you know, whatever. Or like the actual motion controls in the PlayStation 4 and 3 remotes. Oh, that is so uh, rarely used. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, with the haptic feedback aside, Sony have also decided to incorporate a microphone. Now, my understanding is that it will be somewhat advanced, right? It will have um, a proper microphone array, which I think will capture in stereo. Um, it will also have built-in noise cancellation technologies and so on and so forth. Now, again... I'm kind of looking at this and DualShock controllers and now the DualSense have always had speakers. Now the speakers, mm -hmm. I will admit, have sometimes been pretty cool. But again, the games that support it have always been few and far between. But those yeah. that have, have done so in a good way, right? I'm just wondering, how relevant is a microphone really going to be? Because people are hailing this as the most incredible innovation in a controller in a decade. And I'm just like, how? Yeah, this is weird to me because... Any decent gamer is going to have an headset with a mic. No way he's going to game with his buddies and talk through his controller. That's weird. And listen to sound coming from his soundbar. I agree with you. And maybe there'll be some advanced artificial intelligence or voice assistant that Sony haven't announced yet that'll be integrated into the PS5, which would therefore make the mic more infinitely useful. Yeah. But from a game perspective, other than something like SingStar, I can't imagine having a mic in a microphone really being all that useful. Well, honestly, bringing up the, the smart assistant thing, I think that's actually super... That's If they do that, that uh, I'll be up for it. Like, 
connect, you know? Look, it most likely will. This is my assumption as to why the mic has been built in. You know, it's possible that they want to allow people to have an additional means of communicating with the system. Maybe it's an accessibility feature. You know, Mm. you use your voice to do certain things within the OS or within games versus using your fingers, you know? Mm. Um, Of course, it remains to be seen. And there's a good chance that it might be something like OK Google or possibly Alexa. Because if you look at Sony's current products, um, they do support those... Assistant. Assistant. Of course, it, it wouldn't be Siri because that's Apple owned only. So the speculation of an assistant aside, um, Sony have also changed some of the buttons on the face of the DualSense. Um, in addition to having a larger trackpad, they've also taken away the share button. It is now the create button. Um, okay. They've said that they're going to let people know more about that at, at a later stage, but I'm assuming it's just enhanced sharing. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm. I think they're going to enhance their broadcasting features with this one. Look, I will say that is something that I've really enjoyed with the PS4 and I will and they do have a heads up on Xbox in that regard. Mm. You know, having that share button to easily take screen caps or record video and even share it to socials has really been phenomenal. I know that the Xbox Series X controller now has a share button as well, but there aren't really any other advancements yeah. on that controller versus what Sony is doing. Yeah, like imagine pressing record and then double pressing it to cut, but not end the recording. So so you stop the recording, and then you just continue. But it's the same video file. And then you, oh, you I can see. So, upload so that like directly from the... Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That that might actually work. That'd be quite cool, actually. Mm. Uh, look, again, we, we'd, have to, we'd have to wait and see yeah. as to what's going to happen. Look, I'm sure it'll come in handy for streaming, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, we know that, that both consoles to some degree have um, built-in streaming options. Yes. More so Xbox than PlayStation, but you never know. Maybe there's like a Twitch sponsorship in the future. Well, speaking of Twitch and the future, we all know Twitch has been really, really, really bad at policing <laughs> adult content and creators that, that break all their rules. So now, literally just yesterday as, as we're recording this, um, they they came out with a bunch of new rules um, that basically cracks down on showing skin. But are they actually going to do it, though? Because we all know that they pick and choose who the rules apply to. That's the one issue I'm worried about. <laughs> but it sounds big, though. Like, um, creators aren't allowed to to show anything above, like, the bust line. They're not allowed to, to show any tummy. Yeah, but, like, why? I don't know. I, I think it's... So, it, hold on. So, so, what about digital performers? Like, what yes, if they're not real? This is, so, that's what I'm getting at. Like, Project Melody. Like, we spoke about this in our very first inauguration, <laughs> inauguration episode. Um, not even virtual creators are exempt. Wow. Yeah, so like... everything. Every single thing. Now, I think this is to... to cr- basically appease the people like us that say like listen you got to get on this but will they actually follow through well, this is the thing i mean isn't there that one streamer who literally like threw her cat all over the show and yeah. no one did anything like still today yes and then there was somebody else who what accidentally showed like it yeah was- there was this creator he drew uh, or she drew a butt on on an easel she was painting <laughs> And she got How is that an immediate a bannable ban. offense? That's just ridiculous. I don't know. It was an immediate ban versus the, I'm sorry for this word, but Twitch thoughts that show everything and they don't get banned. <laughs> Look, you, you know what? Maybe they should just have a restricted 18 setting. And you know what? You just put it on and then you can basically do whatever you want because it's over 18 and then people need to sign in to make sure that they're over 18. And yeah. sure, if you produce content that is applicable to all, then you have to make sure that you abide to these rules, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be an easier solution to this whole situation? Oh, for sure. Like, do the mixer thing. The, there, There's four categories that you can stream in. And every single category has strict rules that how much skin you can show, what you can show, and how open you can show that kind of thing and th- they don't ban you they just move you up in the category if you by accident chose the wrong one or something yeah yeah so i don't know so it's, it's gonna basically put a lot of green screens to pasture right <laughs> yeah <laughs> all those 
poor green screens, just like the queen. Ah, oh, the queen, Queen yeah. Elizabeth. Okay, so something that's been happening online, and this is why we love the internet, <laughs> is the poor queen wore a luminous green dress. And so the internet decided that she would be perfect cannon fodder for Aww. green screen technology. Of course. And so, yeah, she's been in a lot of memes and things online right now. Yeah, like people have been green screening her, her beautiful green dress <laughs> like crazy. Okay, l- number one rule on the internet is do not wear green <laughs> if you're a creator. Okay. <laughs> No, like, or a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, or a celebrity. Like, it's no one told the, Her Majesty this? So my understanding is that normally when the Queen wears a particular colour, it means something. Now, I don't know what she was going for in terms of this public address, but I will say she looks fantastic in a Hogwarts outfit as well as a member of the Star Trek Enterprise. <laughs> 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 yeah, she she'll always look fantastic. Let's be honest. Now, if you guys are keen to see this, we'll leave a link in the show notes as well, so you can have a look and have a good laugh about it. Because honestly, um, it's it's really just something fun during all of these lockdown procedures. Yeah. And if you'd like to learn more about chroma keying, I'm pretty sure there's an online resource for that, and that's actually going to lead us onto our next topic about actually useful things to do during. A lockdown. The first of which is Harvard University, who've actually announced that they're listing 67 online courses for free for yeah. anybody to actually partake in. I think that's phenomenal. I mean, it yeah. means that we get to put this time, which I will admit I feel I've been really busy in anyway, um, to even better use. Yeah, like obviously these aren't like courses that you have to write an examination for or anything, but it's still nice to learn something oh, of course. as you sit at home, possibly not working, possibly working only part-time. And it's Correct. always nice to learn something new. Broaden your horizons. Exactly. <laughs> what else you can do during the lockdown um, is get some reading done. So I found oh. two amazing links, um, one for the children, one for, for the geeks in all of us. So basically like us. Amazon <laughs> is offering free Sesame Street Kindle ebooks during the lockdown. Oh, I'm not fantastic. sure if it's if it links to your account and it stays free forever for you, but at least enough for now. You can read Sesame Street to your little one. Or um alternatively, Dark Horse Comics is offering all mo- oh, many no, that's a nice one, yeah. yeah. Many of the first issues for free. Yeah. Um, which is amazing. Uh, there are a bunch of cool Dark Horse comics on there. Um, I think I saw the Stephen King's The Dark Tower um, when I checked oh, the catalog wow. yesterday. Um, obviously, it's only oh, the first awesome. issue. And it's technically... It's not a reboot of the novels, but it it's... If you read the end of the last novel, you'll know it's basically a soft reboot. That's how the story goes. Okay, cool. So something else that's also really good from a cultural perspective, because we're talking about books now, is the Mm -hmm. fact that the New York Metropolitan Theater are actually going to be putting on performances every weekday, and they're free to stream. Hey, how great is that? Like, every day at, like, I think it's four o'clock Pacific time, they go live with a new performance. So for us, that's one o'clock in the morning, which is a bit late, but hey, lockdown. What else do we have to do? (laughs) Well, if you miss it, um, it stays live for most of the day and until about an hour before the next show. Oh, so that's great. So you can you yeah. can watch it at your leisure then. Yeah, that's yes. really cool. And I, and I dig that. And I can imagine that they're also getting like hectic workouts. You know, doing theater productions is by no yeah. means easy. <laughs> um, and speaking of workouts, and this is something that I am mostly interested in, uh, Chris Hemsworth's Center Fitness app is giving everyone, I think it's six weeks of free subscription. Oh, okay. There is a downside though. And it's only to first-time subscribers. So I was quite uh, upset to find that out because I had previously (laughs) tried the trial. Uh, I didn't sign up because I didn't feel that I wanted to. And I was keen to do the six weeks now, but I'm not eligible. (laughs) That's... Oh, okay. So that's a bit unfortunate. Look, 
other than that, I'm finding a lot of resources on YouTube. So if you really are interested in doing exercises at home, but like genuine, like body weight, yeah. where you don't need a band or a dumbbell or anything like that, there are a lot of resources. Oh, okay. And um, if you check my Instagram, I do post every now and again. So you can, you know, if you're keen, you know, check it out. But of course, if you don't want to work out and you just want to laze around and watch TV, <laughs> that is also a perfectly good option. <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> or play games, whatever the case is. <laughs> so, so- yeah, did you know um, on that on that note that Plex has made their entire movie catalog of classic sixties, seventies, eighties, and nineties movies? Um, oh, that's open to awesome! Because that was something that used to be locked behind the yeah. Plex Pass paywall. Yes. Um, so basically, Plex already has free offerings on 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 the app, but now uh, they've always just been yeah. like web shows. Um, now you can watch proper movies. That's proper awesome! Classics. I dig that. For free. You, all you need to do is download Plex and sign in. And boom. And Bob's there your you uncle. Go. Now, if you're not interested in classics and you want something a little bit more modern. So I know we spoke about HBO and sci-fi last week where they were offering free series but not applicable to us. Um, somebody that is offering yes. free shows to everybody now is Apple and Apple TV. Oh. Now... Um, Their service is already cheap. It's, what, $5 a month. So that's, what, like 80 rand, 100 rand a month. And the offerings are fairly decent. I mean, look, for the amount of money, it's it's good value, in my personal opinion. Now, however, because of the whole COVID-19 situation, Apple is offering a variety of their original content for free to anyone with an Apple ID. That's anybody. So whether you have a, a Mac, an iPhone, an iPad, or even just the Apple TV app on a smart TV or an Android device, oh. you can now enjoy these shows for free. And my understanding is they're doing this for, I think for a couple of months, I think it's up to six months. I'm not entirely sure on the time frame, but okay. it's free. And the shows that they're offering in particular are Dickinson, which I've personally watched and it's quite funny, uh, Ghostwriter, which is meant for kids, Helpsters, which I haven't seen yet. For All Mankind intrigues me. Haven't seen it yet, but I'm very keen. Servant is an M. Night Shyamalan show. And it was definitely something. If you want to binge something, it's not so bad. (laughs) Uh, Snoopy in Space for the Kids. And then The Elephant Queen for Family Entertainment. Now, it does exclude some of the more premium shows like C and The Morning Show. But I do like the fact that they're doing this. They're one of the few people or companies who are actually offering content on a global mm. scale for free. Yeah, it's it's um, it's huge, I think. It's great. So that pretty much covers different things to do during the lockdown, especially given how ours has now been lengthened. And, yep. um, you know, it might possibly be lengthened even further. We aren't sure just yet. Speaking of, I just wanted to ask you, Mm. Um, what plans do you have for these extra 14 days or like is are you going to maybe try and really do anything different I don't know like um, I I am actively learning Russian um, as you know this um, we know <laughs> otherwise other than that I don't think so all I know is my stocks are quickly running out and I'll need to go to the shop Oh, f- oh yes. I, I, yeah. I must be honest. When I went out of the house for the first time last week, it was quite a, a nerve-wracking experience. Yeah, I can uh, imagine. I know exactly. <laughs> weirdly how enough, because it, and it's so strange, like you know, because we've all taken this freedom of movement for granted. So now to no longer have it is very strange. But it, I think more so also because the government has been very, you know, their message has been quite stern. You know, Mm. they're like, if you're not out there for essential services or essential food, whatever the case is, you're going to be arrested. Yeah. Um, And we've seen this happening a lot. Well, of course, unless you're a government official. Uh, Well, we won't talk about that right now. This is not a political podcast. (laughs) But I do feel everybody should be held to the same accountability and there shouldn't be preferential treatment. Um, Despite that, I think that Cyril is doing a fantastic job. And I do want to talk about that. I just want to mention that for a couple of seconds, just to say that in all my years of being in this country as a young adult, I've never really thought the leadership was any good. I still have my reservations on the current leadership, but I will take my hat off to the guy. He is himself, as well as the people that he has under his staff and that who are advising him, they are doing a fantastic job. And as much as we don't like the extra two weeks, it is absolutely needed. It is necessary. Rather, we do this than have an increase in mortality rates. Yeah. 
Now, say what you will about the ANC. I think Cyril is the best president we've had in a long time. I so. agree. 100%. In decades. Yeah. In decades. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, now from my side, what I plan on doing is what we've mentioned in the list in our podcast. Yeah. I'm genuinely going to go and check out that Harvard link. I want to see what is actually available and maybe do one of those courses. I think it's really cool. Why don't you become a, bec- write some thesis on, on something new, <laughs> you know, like a revolutionary previous thesis? I mean, I, I do want to do it my doctorate in the future, possibly. So mm. who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll go and see some sort of cool course there and yeah. that might lead me into something. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you, you, you you're going to write some thesis on, I don't know, Chris Hemsworth's fitness app and how gaming relates to English. No. <laughs> and <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I do think we've, we've most likely reached the end of the episode nine. Hey, it was another yeah. Giddle. It was amazing it was a good episode yeah Yeah. um once again thank you to everybody who does tune in every week yep we always see who you are well not exactly who you are because that's illegal (laughs) we see we see the stats we always do appreciate it thank you so much for the support and we hope to see you next week for episode 10 yes week number three of the lockdown we're almost a teen (laughs) (laughs) almost (laughs) <laughs> Gosh. awesome well thank you so much everybody we hope that you have a wonderful week further it is also easter weekend this week um regardless of your religious denomination or lack thereof we wish you all a wonderful weekend and may you have good times with the family and friends and stay safe stay very safe please yeah have a lovely there one. we go thank you everybody ciao for now bye bye